Hello, this is Sumanto De and welcome to my lessons, SD Lessons. Today I will tell you something very interesting, story, real life story, true story, my experience of the Northeast. I'll talk mainly about a child who has always caught my fancy. Now, as the picture you can see it, it shows, you can see that it's written Manipur. So, it's a part of Manipur at Churachandpur. If you see the map, you will find Churachandpur is to the south of Manipur. And Manipur is to the extreme northeast of India. You find Assam, then you find Nagaland, then you find Manipur, then Mizoram, and one side you find Tripura. And you will find the border, Myanmar, Burma or Myanmar, the other side. So this picture which shows you, you see the hills. So the first thing is that caught my fancy, Rochugru and this beautiful serene place. You see it's something like that Chader Pahara Bibhuti Bhushan Bandhapaddai, which is written by, uh, translated by Pradeep Sena, the moon mountain. It's something like that. It's something like that. It's all the horizon lined by mountains, Myanmar mountains. And you find vast land, open area. So this school also situated somewhere in the outskirt of the town. And it was a really in a picturesque place. Now you see that entrance. Look at this entrance. You see the entrance? Now it shows that something it's something like a bridge. So it was like a bridge. I'm talking about, yes, I did not mention you the year. It is exactly 30 years ago. 1993. Most likely in the month of February. Most likely. Now, I don't remember the month. It was quite cold when I landed there. From Imphal, I went by bus. And the story, it's a different story. I, how I went to Imphal and then from Imphal to Chura Chandpur. This place is Chura Chandpur. And then a small vehicle I took up to the school. And there the director, the director's wife and many students were waiting for me. And as I came down from my vehicle, uh, the children were very surprised. Maybe my face was different than theirs. So they were a little bit surprised to see me. And they were staring at each other. They're looking at each other. Some were smiling. The smaller ones, smaller children, smiling. The bigger one controlled themselves. But then they whispered something in Mizu or something in Manipuri. I did not understand. Later on, I came to know there are so many dialects. Mar, Tadao, Tankul, Maite, Naga, Kuki. So many. So many languages, so many dialects, which I hardly knew even later also. I couldn't learn much. I learned a little bit. Anyway, but then as I dropped, you know, the boys, the girls, the hostel boys and girls, they're looking at me, staring at me. They did not know what to do. The director's wife said, come on, someone help. And this small boy, Rochugnu, whom I will talk about, Rochugnu, he was the first one. He gave a nice smile at me. And he said, I'll help you, sir. Let me pick up your bag. I say, oh, no, 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 you're a small kid. I can help myself. He says, no, sir, I will help you. So, and I was talking about this bridge. Yes, I crossed this bridge. This is a wooden bamboo bridge and planks and all that. And down it was a, like a wetland, no? The fish and all that was cultivated below, under, under that. So I had to go on top of that. It was something like a bridge entered and the view, something like this, which you can see. One side the hostel, one side the school building and all around. Only a part of it I have shown you. So this boy Rochugnu, he took up my bag. The other boys and girls a little bit hesitant. They look different. One thing I I liked very much in the beginning only is the way the boys had their hair cut. All like islands on top, a tuft of hair on right on top of the head. 
and the rest all shaven. So, so it was totally different. So that I'm talking about 1993. They had that style then, and many of them wearing jackets, leather jackets with American American flag printed on it. So I understood they like the USA style. USA songs because they were holding some guitars, some of them. And this boy Rochugnu, he took my bag, and everyone was speaking what language I didn't understand anything, a bit of it. Rochugnu took my bag, took me to the this you can see the left side that building, yeah, right in the middle. He took me right in the middle. It, I had to go through a dormitory, and my room was in the middle. So let me show you the room. Yeah, like something like this. A glass window, and instantly I liked it. I liked my room, a wooden room. One side, one dormitory; other side, another dormitory. And I had two doors to enter the dormitories. But I had to cross one of the boys' dormitory and then come to my room. That was the thing. Now this boy, Rochugnu, said, "Sir, you relax. I'll get your lunch." Normally, I said, "At what time do you get your lunch?" You say, "Get late in the evening. Once you get in the morning at seven, and then you get in the evening at five, and then I said, anything else? Dinner? So that's dinner. You get bread and tea in between, and the dinner is quite early. That's around in between five to five thirty. I said, "What's there?" So he brought a plate of some food, and you can see the plate. I am trying to show you. Now, what I saw is a rice, a heap of rice, on top something burnt. I said, "What is that?" He said, "That it looks like burnt rice." Rochugnu said, "Yes, yeah, sir, that's very tasty. You like it?" And what's that red one? Red powder? It's chili powder. Lovely. You see, in the northeast, our chilies are very tasty. You like it? Chili powder. And what those white, white on right on on all over the rice? So that's garlic. Garlic and chili powder, very tasty, sir. You sprinkle on top, and then say something yellow soup-like thing is given. That's dal, and right on top, there's another thing, yellow is something different. Yeah, that is potato soup and garnished with lot of coriander. I understood. I did not say much. I said I have to rely. I have to depend on this. I have to eat this. I cannot now ask for anything better. And then I looked something on the bowl, something inside the bowl, and then I found some edible snails were there. Oh Lord! I said to myself, had it. Was that? Rochugnu said that's. He said something in Mizo. I did not understand, but I understood it was the snail, edible snail. And you know, in Bengal also, or many parts of the world, they eat edible snails, but they cook it. With spice, they break open the shell, then the fleshy part they cook it, and they eat like curry. In Bengal also they eat. So, but this was something different. You know, the full snail was there, and the snails were dead because they were boiled, but the shell was not removed. And I said, Rochugnu, how to eat it, Rochugnu? He, he by by that time he became my guide. He was guiding me in every uh, every small little thing. He was helping me. He was guiding me. He was telling me. So I said, "What is that? How to eat that?" He said, "Oh!" And he demonstrated. It's very simple. He pick. He picked up one of the snail, gave a tap with his spoon. The shell fell off, and then he sucked the inner part, the soft, fleshy part. And he said, "Sir, it's very easy." I said, "Okay, Rochungnu, I'll try," because I did not. Want to uh, show him that I am not going to eat that. I am going to throw that. I did not want to show him. So I had the plate of rice with dal, with the potato soup, little bit of the chili powder. I understood this will create trouble the next day, and garlic. I said, how long can I continue like this? I don't know. But Rochugnu, you know, Rochugnu kept on helping me. He helped me a lot. He guided me wherever I used to go. He used to go with me and be like an interpreter with the other people and me in between. Whenever 
I had to buy something in the market used to go with me. One thing I realized regarding the food that children, if you go to any part of the world, the food which you are having at home, you will not get that. It will be something different. And you have to adjust yourself. And if you cannot, you will be in deep trouble. My purpose of telling this is food habit of different parts of the world are different. Northeast is totally different. China, Thailand, they will be much different. If you are lucky, you will go to European countries, USA, Canada, Australia. You will get similar kind of thing, food. But if you go to China or Thailand or these places, Korea, then children, you have to learn how to cook yourself. Otherwise, you will have terrible time. So with this, with this children, bye-bye. I hope you liked it.